So, greetings, uh, welcome to uh, today's class. So, just a quick recap of uh, where we uh, stopped, right. So, we are uh, looking at uh, power steering in the previous class. So, the uh, requirement of power steering is motivated from the fact that as vehicle mass and vehicle speeds increased, more effort was required to uh, steer the vehicle, right. So, the question is can some assistance be provided to the driver in order to achieve that steering function. So, that led to the motivation of uh, power steering and uh, as we discussed, you know like one could achieve uh, this additional uh, f uh, effort by increasing the steer ratio, but that is counterproductive because increasing the steer ratio will certainly increase the torque magnification, but that will be the expense of having higher steering wheel angular displacement for the same steered wheel uh, rotation, right. So, that is the uh, trade off. So, uh, that is why you know this power assisted steering came into being. So, if you look at uh, broadly the classes of this power assist steering. we would uh, look at all these three classes, you know. The first one that we will be looking at is what is called as a hydraulic power steering. Okay, let us uh, abbreviate as HPS, okay. The second class will be electro hydraulic power steering uh, EHPS and then third class is going to be electric power steering okay which we will abbreviate, abbreviate as EPS okay. So, broadly these are the uh, three categories of power assisted steer, assist steerings that we would be looking at. So, now uh, if we uh, look at most power assist systems you know like so, uh, we have what is called as a speed dependent power assist that is the assistance provided by this uh, power steering does not remain the same with speed vehicle speed okay. So, that is uh, one important attribute, why? Because see typically when would we require the most assist you know like t when we want to take tight corners or uh, do for example, you know like uh, a parking maneuver you know like, like parallel parking and so on right. So, when we are doing this so called tight steering right, so where uh, we want like uh, to achieve very small turning radii right or uh, essentially we not to go on a very uh, tight path, then the uh, effort or the assistance provided to the driver should be higher. And as speed increases, you know like the assistance provided to the driver is reduced, so that there is not too much steering from the uh, power assist system, right. So, that is the uh, concept of this uh, speed assist system. So, if we look at it, at low vehicle speeds, the uh, magnitude or the amount of steering assist uh, is higher to account for, uh, let us say, a tight. Uh, parking slash slow speed cornering maneuvers, right. So, what do we mean by tight, uh, low radius or uh, high curvature maneuvers, right. So, that is what is hap that is what is happening at low speeds. And as the speed increases, the amount of this power assist is reduced. So, the amount of assist is reduced as speed is increased, okay. 
to avoid too much steering you know like so because we do not want the vehicle to be steered too much by a high amount of assist at higher speeds okay. So, that is the uh, uh, concept behind what is called a speed assist steering right speed dependent power assist. So, let us first uh, look at this uh, hydraulic power steering let us see how uh, it functions then we will uh, go to other types of uh, power uh, assist okay. So, what happens in this uh, hydraulic power steering? So, let us uh, look at hydraulic power steering okay HPS. So, if you look at a, a hydraulic power steering let us uh, take a look at a simple uh, schematic to just understand the concept. So, if we look at uh, a typical even rack and pinion based power steering in uh, a passenger car, so with this power steering, so in the previous class we looked at what is a rack and pinion uh, steering. So, if, if you uh, uh, recall you know we have a steering wheel then we have a steering column uh, in the traditional uh, rack and pinion steering what happened the steering column uh, at the end of the steering column there was a pinion and the pinion essentially messed with the rack and any rotation of the steering wheel is converted to a rotation of a pinion and consequently a displacement of the rack right that is what happens in the uh, base rack and pinion system. In the uh, rack and pinion system with a hydraulic power assist what we have is that we have a uh, steering control wall uh, which is mounted on the steering column okay and there is a supply of hydraulic fluid you know at a high pressure okay there is a pump and a storage unit which essentially circulates this hydraulic oil okay at a high pressure. So, we will shortly look at this uh, steering control valve in more detail but what happens is that when the driver turns this oil high at high pressure is routed through this control wall to what is called as a power cylinder okay. So, it is just a cylinder which is mounted on the rack okay in line with the rack and that has a piston. So, we can see that the, there are two sides to the piston. So, essentially depending on the direction of rotation by the driver the pressurized fluid is given to the appropriate side end of the piston to create a an assist force okay that is the concept behind this uh, hydraulic power steering okay. So, let us look closely at uh, this uh, steering uh, system the hydraulic power steering system okay. So, essentially as we uh, just discussed it uses hydraulic uh, fluid pressure. Uh, to assist the steering process okay. Then uh, if you look at the main components of the hydraulic power steering system we have a, a reservoir for the steering uh, power steering fluid then we have a pump we have the corresponding hoses we have the control wall which routes the uh, fluid in the correct path right. Then we have what are called pressure relief walls which ensure that the uh, peak system pressure is limited so that it protects the uh, system components. Then we have this hydraulic cylinder or what is called as a power cylinder right. So, in the rack. So, those are the main components of this hydraulic uh, power uh, steering system okay. So, the control wall is typically mounted at the end of the steering column okay and it 
directs the fluid flow to the appropriate side. of the power cylinder piston. Okay, so, that is what happens with this control wall and if we look at this power cylinder, the power cylinder is uh, mounted in line with the rack and the power cylinder directly uh, acts, uh, I should say the power cylinder or the piston, right in the power cylinder directly acts on the rack right to create that uh, assist function okay so that's how this hydraulic power steering works so if you look at this uh, uh, power steering let's look at a few components so the most uh, common uh, type of pump which is used in this uh, power cylinder is a vein type pump. Okay, so, what is this uh, vein type pump? Let us look at that. So, with a simple schematic. So, this is uh, uh, what is called as a vein pump. Okay. So, it is most commonly used in hydraulic power steering uh, systems. So, what is this uh, vein pump? You know, we have a rotor you know uh, and in this rotor we can see that you know there are slots okay which are in which these veins are fitted so these veins can move radially in these slots okay and then we have this a, a cavity which is in the shape of a cam right so it, it's not uh, uh, sorry it's uh, it's in the shape of an ellipse okay it's not essentially in the uh, a circular cavity, but it is in the shape of an ellipse. So, what happens is that when this rotor rotates, these veins are going to be thrown out due to centrifugal force, right. So, the, the top ends of the veins are going to slide on the inner surface of this elliptical cavity. So, what happens? when hydraulic oil comes from the reservoir let us say the vane type pump the rotor is rotating in this direction right so when the uh, what to say the rotor is rotating what happens is that the oil is sucked into the cavity between the two veins okay from the reservoir and as this way a rotor rotates the the oil which is taken in is compressed and then the pressurized oil is released to the outlet port of the from the coming out of the vein ok. So, that is how this vein type pump operates ok. So, uh, essentially the, uh, the idea is to uh, uh, let us say take in the oil or suck the oil from the reservoir as essentially the keep vein keeps on rotating pressurize it and then uh, deliver it through the outlet port of the pump okay so this vane type pump you know like which essentially uh, uh, delivers this pressurized oil and the oil or the fluid comes to this steering control wall so let's look at how the steering control wall so, essentially what happens in this uh, steering control wall is the following ok, it is not a, it's not, let me just adjust the size alright. So, what happens is that this steering control wall is mounted on the steering column. So, we can see this uh, central part right, so which where we have the splines that are connected to the steering column. So, any rotation of the steering wheel by the driver is going to rotate this spool okay, which is mounted at the center. Now, we can see several ports 
which are either connected with the tank okay, or connected with the right chamber of the power cylinder or the left chamber or, or the hydraulic pump okay, outlet. So, the what happens is that like when the steering wheel is centered this fluid from the hydraulic pump enters through this port okay, and is circulated through the entire fluid circuit right. So, some of it uh, goes to the right side of the power cylinder, some goes to the left side, some goes to the reservoir okay. The, but the consequence is that when it is centered the net the pressure in the right chamber and the left chamber of the power cylinder is the same right. So, consequently there is no assist okay. So, that is what we want when the uh, steering wheel is centered right. So, that is the uh, mechanism. So, now let us look at what happens if the driver turns the steering wheel to the left or the right okay and how does this steering control wall then respond. So, let me uh, introduce two uh, simple schematics right that show what happens when the uh, steering wheel is either turned to the right or to the left. So, uh, let us first consider the scenario where the steering wheel uh, is turned to the right okay. So, this is a scenario where the steering wheel is turned to the right. So, then what happens is then we can immediately observe that the spool is rotated because it is connected to the steering column. Now, you can see uh, something interesting right the pressurized oil from the pump which enters through this port is directed through this path into the right chamber of the power cylinder okay. So, that is how the uh, control valve is designed. So, on the other hand as the piston is moving fluid is displaced from the left chamber is not it. So, consider a, a, a cylinder and piston assembly. So, the piston is shifted to the right then in the left chamber or the pressure is increased in the right chamber or so the piston is going to move towards the left. So, in the whatever fluid is displaced in the left chamber has to be let out somewhere right. So, you can immediately see that the return oil which is coming from the left chamber is connected to the tank or the reservoir right. So, you can see that there are two, two uh, paths by which the pressurized oil is taken to the right chamber and two paths by which the return oil comes from the left chamber and returns to the tank. So, what is the consequence? This implies that there is a net assist force in the power cylinder to support a right turn right because that is the intention of the driver right is it not. So, that is what happens when the steering wheel is turned towards the right. The reverse sequence of operation happens when the steering wheel is turned to the left. So, this schematic tells us what happens when the steering wheel is rotated to the left right. What happens if the steering wheel is rotated to the left? We can immediately see that the pressurized oil from the pump now goes to the left chamber right the ports are connected in that manner and then we can immediately observe that the return oil from the right chamber goes to the reservoir or the tank okay. So, that is how this uh, flu, uh, what is a control wall works okay. But there are some although you know like uh, the operating principle is uh, what, uh, pretty simple there are some limitations associated with this hydraulic power steering what are they. So, please note that in a hydraulic power steering this hydraulic fluid is pumped or circulated in the circuit all the time continuously. So, does not matter whether the driver is steering or not 
the fluid is pumped through the circuit and that results in loss of energy right because ultimately the energy which is required to drive the pump has to come from the engine is it not. So, the engine drives the pump and the pump is operated continuously. So, that is a, a critical limitation of this uh, hydraulic uh, power steering. So, essentially we have the first limitation is that we have a continuously running pump which results in significant energy loss right it is a it is a waste of energy right when the driver is not steering the uh, steering uh, st when the driver is not rotating the steering wheel. And secondly it will not work if the engine is stalled right. So, due to some reason if the engine is not working or it is stalled right. So, then we lose this functionality right as far as the hydraulic power assist is concerned. Of course, if the hydraulic power assist fails let us say there is a severe leakage in the main line right and the pressure drops and there is no uh, fluid pressure generated then please note that the driver will be able to maintain basic steering capability because the steering column is still connected to the pinion mechanically. So, there is always a fail safe you know right because please remember this hydraulic power steering is only augmenting the steering torque it is not completely replacing the rack and pinion arrangement ok. So, that is the those are the main features ok of this hydraulic power steering. So, in order to address a few limitations of this uh, hydraulic power steering you know the electro hydraulic power steering has been developed and also is finding use. So, this is let us abbreviate it as EHPS. So, what is this electro hydraulic power steering? So, the main limitation of this hydraulic power steering is that the engine has to keep on uh, operating the pump continuously. So, what happens in this electro hydraulic power steering as the uh, name indicates we have a motor pump unit what is abbreviated as MPU that pressurizes the fluid right and where the pump is driven by an electric motor ok. So, consequently the pump need not be operated continuously right. So, whenever there is a requirement the electric motor can operate the pump ok. So, it is it is compared to hydraulic power steering ok. It saves energy since the uh, hydraulic pump can be operated when required ok and independent of the engine right. So, of course, now we need an energy source for driving the motor right. So, let us say the motor will ha will require its own energy source maybe from a battery and the associated uh, electronic circuits to provide the input energy to the motor right. So, that is a, co a complexity which is added. But one uh, more advantage when compared to an uh, hydraulic power steering is that we can have an electronic control unit uh, regulating this motor right. So, uh, at least uh, some active control you know like can be obtained from this electro hydraulic power steering ok when compared to hydraulic power steering ok. So, el electronic control unit or ECU is used to uh, control the motor ok the motor pump unit. So, the, those are all some features of electro hydraulic power steel.